happening, people? It's Brett here again from Bad Intentions Boxing. We're back with another episode of Small Talk to Ring Walk. Once again, I'm really pleased to have with us Isaac Lowe. Isaac, how are you keeping this evening, buddy? Yeah, good evening, pal. Uh, thanks for having us on once again. Uh, we enjoy these interviews, me and you, don't we? <laughs> it's definitely starting to become a bit of a regular thing. Let's jump straight into it. Were you, uh, was you lucky enough to catch any of the boxing at the weekend? Yeah, watched all of it. I think it was a brilliant show. Fair play to Eddie, put a good show on. Uh, I think all the fights was interesting. All the fights was like 50-50. Everyone got stuck into it. And again, uh, there was some upsets and uh, it was good to watch. It was enjoyable. Uh, and there was a couple of performances in there. What, most notably, David Avenisian versus Josh Kelly. What did you make of David's performance? Yeah, not just me. I think everybody knew uh, how dangerous of a fighter he was. And I think with boxing is you can be as good as boxer you want to be. You can have all the tricks what Josh Kelly can have. He's obviously the lad is super, super, super talented. Do you know what I mean? But in professional boxing, sometimes uh, you need a bit more than skill. And it's funny to say that you need will and heart and determination. And I think that's what showed his skill. Um, Josh started off brightly, fast hands looked superb at the beginning, first round, nice and sharp and crispy. But then I think he got drawn into a, a bit of a dog fight. I think he got cut behind the back and it looked a bad cut. Uh, and he got hurt a couple of times. And when you, to be fair, when you're in your, your only your, your 11th fight and you've never really been into the middle rounds and you're having 50 50 and you're hitting someone with everything you've got, especially when he rocked him in the third and he thought he had to, he tried to hit him with three or four left hooks. I think it was round four, four one after another. And, that, and and he just kept them coming back. And you've got someone like that in front of you. You need a plan A, a plan B, I should say. And I think he just didn't, didn't get out with it, couldn't find it. And uh, fair play to Finger, he, uh, he kept the pressure on him and he, uh, Broken down. There are, I've seen a lot of comments on social media, and I suppose from another, one professional boxer to another, it's quite an interesting, uh, I suppose, question or topic to raise. Was a, a lot of people were saying that he he doesn't look fit enough. He's too big for the weight. Uh, he, his heart gave in. What what do you make of those sort of comments? I definitely fit enough because if you train with Adam Booth, you, you're super super fit. Uh, everyone knows that. If you're training for any fight, if you're training for any European title fight, you're going to be super fit. So I think that's a lot of crap. Uh, he looked in peak condition. He looks like he had a great training camp to me. At the end of the day, it, it, he's 11th pro fight. He got, for me personally, I think he got, it was a bit too early for him. Do you know what I mean? Yes, he's a super, super talent. And listen, we know he's got fantastic skill. But as I said, sometimes when you're getting in and you're hitting someone with clean shots and you're not bothering them and they're tucked up tight in the tech and they're walking you down, You've got to know to do them rounds backing off, and you can't just keep standing and try and take someone toe to toe. And I think once you got one, once uh, thing he got start. I've got I can't pronounce his name very well. Um, once he started to stand and trade with him, and he, he tried to love it, then it, it was in. It was never going to win the fight by that. The only way he was going to win the fight was smart boxing, feints and boxing on the back foot, and probably digging one in now and then. Uh, but he chose to. I think he got tired a bit, and obviously not used to the, the pace what it was at, and then he got caught into a dog fight and he got caught and he got hurt. Did you, um, what did you make of the Robbie Davis Jr. and the Dominic Ingle situation in the corner? Because it looked like to me that Robbie Davis Jr. wanted to go orthodox, but Dominic Ingle seemed insistent on him uh, staying at Southport. Yeah. Well, in my eyes, I understand that. Where if... Obviously, Dominic wanted to stick to. Obviously, they must have been working it in the gym. They must have been doing something for uh, Dom for saying keep south. But, but as a fighter, when you're inside the ring, um, and you know something's not working, never mind. You don't wait to you go to the end of the belt. You change it yourself. You've got to have a, as I go back to you've got to have a plan B. You know it's not working. You've got to change it. You've got to adapt inside that ring yourself. You know what I mean? Um, you and then go back to the corner, explain to him, and I'll see what you do. But if it's not working for you, you know to change it. Do you know what I mean? If I'm in a fight and I know I'm southpaw and I'm getting catched with fucking left hands or right hands every two seconds, then sorry to say, I'll have to go back the way I fight and I'll have to think of a plan B or get into another fight. Do you know what I mean? Uh, another di- think of another direction to get through the fight. It was, clearly wasn't working. He was getting pinged all the time. And he didn't feel comfortable. So if you didn't feel comfortable with something and you couldn't do it, then why why stick to it? Do you know what I mean? You're in a fight. You're not in a spa. You need to win a fight. So you should, you should adapt these on self. But I don't understand why Dom never told If it wasn't working... Um, Oh, I did not change one. Well, that's for them. them. Only them two know what the problem was. Uh, obviously, Dom trains and Dom's a world class coach. He probably seen in in the gym. He's been working in the gym, so he probably realised. Probably thought he's comfortable doing it. Maybe he just didn't want to do it. And he was trying to say, "Look, stick with it." Do you know what I mean? But listen, he done well. It was a good fight. That that was a hard fight. It was a hard grueling fight, and especially in that last round, I thought he was going to get stopped in the last round. He done well to get through Robbie Davis. 
Yeah, yeah, it, it definitely looked like it was a gruelling fight and one of those that I think takes a lot out of people. Um, it, it's interesting to hear, you know, say the comments obviously about Robbie uh, and Dominic because there's lots, of, again, that's said on social media, but it's easy for us, you know, we're sitting this side at home. On yeah, the of course, side. it's when you're sitting on the... When you're sitting on your TV with your, your slippers on and your coffee you're on and you say, oh, do this, do that. Trust me, when you're getting punched in the face and when you're in there and you're in live and direct, that's what I'm saying. It's all right saying you want to do it. You don't wait to go back to college. You have to adapt yourself. You're the one who's getting punched. It's down to yourself to change and uh, you do what's best for you. No, fair comment, fair comment. Uh, what did you make of the enigma, the, the man himself that is Florian Marku? Yeah, he's one of them. And listen, he has to sell. He has to sell things. He has to talk and be loud and get out of there. I thought he done. I thought he done well. I thought uh, Charlesman, if his name is Charlesman, uh, he done pretty done. He took some big shots. He kept them coming forward all night. Uh, he, he made a fight of it, uh, but he, the corner in the right position pull him out because he took. He was taking some big shots at the end, and uh, it, they're not good for your brain cells. And when you keep getting taken out, fl flush in the brain. Uh, but it was good. I think it was good. It was interesting. He definitely got a bit of skill. Uh, he switches. He's, he looks powerful. I think it'll be interesting to watch. But I said he's only he's only had what he had six or seven or something. Yeah, that so, was his fight. Yeah, so he's still a, he's still a long way to go yet. Do you know what I mean? Uh, but yeah, he, he looked he look good. Um, so I suppose that leads us on to the topic, uh, the reason why we initiate this conversation. Jordan Gill was obviously uh, on the card. What did you make of Jordan's performance? Yeah, I thought he, uh, to be honest, I'm not going to criticize. I thought he boxed well on the back foot. Uh, but let's be honest with you. Uh, I've seen an interview today and said it was not about me uh, calling him out. Let's get it right, Jordan. I never called you out. You was on about saying in your press conference the, the day before or something. If I still got a pulse, uh, you stay, stay in the ring and get the ring with me. Why would I need a pulse to get in the ring with you? You're not uh, Lemonchenko, so when you're just a normal kid with a, a, a scruffy head. Uh, but yeah, he boxed pretty well. Box, but let's be honest, the Mexican wasn't really. It was good. It was it, plan A when it come forward. A typical Mexican hands around your head. He never no footwork whatsoever, um, and he throws straight shots. You know what I mean? He got joined in the corner a couple of times, and uh, he done well. But listen, I'm not going to criticise him. He done well. He won the fight, and that's what he did. He had a tough ten rounds. It was a learning fight. He got for it fair play. And it, I suppose you've seen the uh, the response that he said afterwards as well that he came out. Uh, and he questioned and said that if you wanted a fight, there's the potential that it could be on the AJ Tyson Fury undercard for a world title eliminator. Have you got any thoughts on that? Yeah, there's no problem with me. As I said, he only wants to get on the big show, doesn't he? Yeah. Obviously, everyone knows I'm on that show. And uh, listen, if uh, my, my management team, MTK, they sort everything out, I leave everything down to them. Uh, so I don't get involved with none of it. Anything them they, they do everything goes speak to them and they they solve it all out for me. But listen, if it's a, a world title eliminator, then it makes sense. But apart from that, what is there if there's not a world title eliminator, then there's not really much there. But it's got to be for a world title eliminator. And I'll and I'll fight him and I'll beat him up. He might have fought a tough Mexican, but he's never fought a gypsy warrior before. A young, fresh, hungry tiger coming at him. Uh, and I'll break him down. I believe I stop him eight between eight and ten rounds pretty well. Could be before that. Uh, he's, He's good, he's tough, but he's never fought no one like me, to be honest with you. And I sent an interview today saying, uh, oh, Isaac's scared of me. Please, Jesus, will you come back with some better comments than that, mate? Have a day off. Because, you know, I think it's fair to say you're ranked 15 across every single one of the governing bodies, as high as nine with the WBO. Obviously, you've got that WBC um, international strap as well. So... Do you think it's fair to say, and there's a lot of other comments that have been flying around, that you're a level above Jordan Gill? Listen, if the fight does come off, as I said, it, it, it doesn't interest me. I only get told who will fight. I'm fighting on March the 12th, and then I'm on the Fury card. Whoever I am against the Fury card, if it's maybe Jordan Gill or if it's someone else in the top 10, that's who it is. Uh, but listen, I, I'm the uh, the planner fighter of the fight. I, it's down to me, do you know what I mean? Uh, he's a good he's a good, he's a a good, good worthy contender. As I said, if it's a world title eliminator, then all well and good. But that's, it's, it's got to be something there to draw me to the fight or... If Eddie Gay wants to get his uh, checkbook out and make sure there's some money on the line, then yeah, uh, I'm happy to beat his ladder. But as I said, it doesn't interest me if I, about fighting Jordan Gill. But as I said, if it comes across my path, I'm not going to go out my path and out my route for Jordan Gill because I don't need to. I'm in a good position. I'm doing my own kind of thing. I'm happy where we're going. But if it comes across it and we have to fight, then I'll smash him up. No problem whatsoever. Easy day for me. I'm happy to do it. But till then, I listen to my team and I just go with the floor. 
there's obviously been backwards and forwards between you and Jordan the, the past couple of days, and there seems to be a massive emphasis to be that's been put on. And we had this conversation prior. Uh, your grammar. Is there anything that you want to share on that in terms of we spoke previously before about education? Was that something that you completed? Yeah, well, I sent I sent his little silly comment uh, trying to get me. I don't know was he trying to make me get really upset with it or everyone knows I, I'm not the best of speller. I've got dyslexia. I can't. I'm not. I can't read. I can't write. Uh, I might get all my speller wrong, but there's one thing I can do. I can fucking fight. Uh, and I want him in that ring with four ropes as me and him. Never mind all my spelling. I let them two fists do the talk and they, they spell my words out for me. Uh, so that's the most important thing. You can have a laugh and a joke about someone can spell or not. So what? There's a lot more kids out there who's worse than me who can't spell. And I think it's, I think, to be honest with you, I think it's a bit cruel. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm kids who, who, who do suffer like me, who suffer with dyslexia. Obviously, it doesn't bother me. I got on with it. But uh, if he thinks that's bothering me or he's just, he's just a little dick, isn't he? Is there an element, do you think that's overstepping the mark, that, you know, there's boxing and then you do you feel like he's gone far too personal? Oh, no, nah, that's not personal. Listen, I'm a travelling lad. Listen, I've been, I've, I've had racial all my life. Uh, I've been called a lot worse than that, so it goes in one ear out the other, do you know what I mean? I'm, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Well, if, he think, if that's only the way he can cheer himself up or try and get into my head, God love him come fight night, because uh, if we did have to fight, I'd take his head off his shoulders for him. Well, I suppose you've just taken away my last bit there then, Isaac. So I was going to say, we're going to send this out. We'll tag Jordan Gill in it and we'll see if we can get a response from Jordan. Is there any last final message that you'd like to send out to Jordan if he's watching? No, there's no message. As I said, if you come across my way, as I said, you might have fought a boxer Mexican, but you've never fa faced a young, fresh gypsy warrior who's coming to destroy you. So be wary. Be careful what you wish for, son. Isaac, it's been a pleasure to have you with us this morning, uh, this evening. Sorry, as I say, I'll make sure I tag Jordan in this, and we'll see if we can get a response, uh, and we'll see what he comes back with. I'm extremely grateful again that you've jumped on here. I'm Brett Redman. This is Bad Intentions Boxing. Let's go.